really just trying to take all the precautionary measures, hoping that we won't need them. City and county officials are preparing for potential flooding in our area. The remnants of Tropical Storm Lee are expected to dump to up to six inches of rain here in the Twin Tiers. Good evening, I'm Renata Steele. I'm Scott Kirk. Thanks for choosing Twin Tiers tonight. Now that much rain in a short period of time could cause significant flooding in some areas. So we're going to head right over to Chief Meteorologist Joe Veras, who's tracking the storm in our new severe weather forecast center. Joe. All right, thanks a lot, guys. Yeah, we're ahead of the storm right now. Not too much going on as of yet, but uh, this could potentially be a dangerous weather situation unfolding for us here in the Twin Tiers. As far as our latest flood watches go across our viewing area, well, everyone under that flood watch beginning well, actually at the top of the hour at 6 o'clock and it lasts right through Thursday afternoon. So everyone in our viewing area under a flash flood watch. As far as our latest radar maps go, we're looking at rain overspreading areas of Pennsylvania, slowly heading up towards the north and east, starting to push over in the southern areas of New York right now, but it looks like the heaviest rain not until tomorrow. Here's some things to keep in mind as we start to look at some heavy amounts of rain heading our way tomorrow afternoon. Obviously, as uh, waters rise, you want to move to higher ground. Avoid water covered roadways. That's certainly a possibility with this storm. If trapped, abandon your vehicle. Two feet of water is enough to carry away most vehicles. Be especially cautious at night and obviously keep children away from high water. Again, we could potentially be looking at six inches of rain here in the Twin Tiers. I'll let you know what that means for area rivers coming up in just a few minutes. All right, thank you very much, Joe. Now with Irene, we didn't get hit directly and they were getting ready like they are now. And unfortunately, fortunately, they didn't need it, but these remnants of Tropical Storm Lee are moving across the United States right now in several areas are experiencing, experiencing historic flooding from these heavy rains. The Twin Tiers could get two to six inches of rain over the next couple of days, and some area officials are already preparing. WEMY TV's Walter Smith Randolph joins us live in the studio with more. Walter. Sky and Renata, Tropical Storm Lee made landfall in Louisiana, dropping more than 10 inches of rain on New Orleans. The remnants of the storm are headed our way, and officials are gearing up for the downpour. This was a scene on the Alabama Causeway on Monday as Tropical Storm Lee blew through Alabama. That same storm could dump up to six inches of rain on the Twin Tiers by Friday. A lot of tropical moisture heading up through the Keystone State as we go through the next 24 to 48 hours. Worst case scenario in the Elmira area, we could be approaching six inches of rain by late Thursday. Public Works Director Andy Avery says his office is taking the flood warning seriously. We're preparing trucks with uh, barricades and stop signs and barrels and flashers and the like. I'll be working on putting some sandbags together. The Red Cross is also advising people to stay informed and have an emergency plan and kit ready to go just in case. We want you to have enough material to allow you to be uh, help you survive for three days. So primarily water and some non-perishable food, granola bars, high energy bars. For a complete list of what you should have in your emergency kit, head on over to, to WENY.com. There's a Red Cross link in this story. Reporting live in the studio, Walter Smith Randolph, WENY TV News. All right, thanks, Joe. We'll be checking back in. Now, as we said, Bradford County under a state of emergency tonight. It's taking the brunt of a slow-moving wall of rain. Roads were shut down throughout the county today, leading to some treacherous situations for people just trying to get home. We have team coverage tonight. WEMY TV's Walter Smith Randolph joins us first with a story out of the northern tier. Walter. Sky and Renata, emergency responders could barely keep up trying to keep people safe from flooding roads. The heavy rains even led to a water rescue. This was the Tawanda Creek in Monroton shortly before noon today. Heavy rains flooded areas and shut down roads. Uh, a lot of water. Water's over just about every part of the road up here in Northeast. Uh, 220. Uh, 187, 87, New Shore's underwater, New Albany's underwater. But people still needed to get home. The driver of this SUV thought he could make it across this flooded road. He was wrong. Evidently, someone tried driving through standing water in a roadway, which is something you don't want to do in something like this. And if you do, stay in your car, you got cell phone, call 911. 
The Tawanda Water Rescue Team responded to the scene and rescued him. The driver is now safe, but we can't say the same for his car. If there's water, turn around, don't drown. Now, around 1.30 this afternoon, the Northeast Bradford School District posted a message on its website saying they couldn't get students home safely, so they're keeping the kids in the schools where it's safe and dry. Stay tuned to WNY-TV News and WNY.com, and we'll let you know if schools will be open tomorrow. Reporting live in the studio, Walter Smith Randolph, WNY-TV News. All right, thank you very much, Walter. And in the southern tier, floodwaters washing out roads in Tioga County, New York, leaving no way in or out of some neighborhoods. And once again, the Susquehanna River is encroaching on the Cannon Hole neighborhood. WEMY TV's Joe Malillo tells us the flooding is getting worse. Joe, how are they holding up? Renata, when I went out to the Cannon Hole area, they've seen floods like this before, but they've never seen the river rise as fast as it did today. Now, emergency crews were stopping drivers on Route 282 in Nichols, where a bridge was completely washed out. You see in this video here, a pickup tr truck floated downstream, but nobody was inside. Houses on Old Barton Road are about four feet from the riverbank, and neighbors are preparing for the worst. If it takes my house, it takes my house. What am I gonna do? I can't, I can't control mother nature. The bank is going, so what am I gonna do? Sit here and wait it out. She's going to have to wait out for another two days. The rain is expected to continue. Live in the studio, Joe Malillo, WENY TV News. I hope they get them all out. I don't want to see anybody go down river. Record-breaking flooding along the Susquehanna River leads to rescues by boats and helicopters. Homes are flooded, roads are underwater, and towns are being evacuated at this hour. Good evening, I'm Renata Steele. I'm Scott Kirk. Thanks for choosing Twin Tiers tonight. As the Susquehanna River continued to rise today, neighbors throughout the Twin Tiers were forced to leave their homes. Some roads were impassable, and as you mentioned, people had to be rescued by boats and helicopters. WENY TV's Walter Smith Randolph was in the Cannon Hole neighborhood where people were airlifted to safety. We have team coverage again tonight. He joins us live in the studio with more. Walter. Scott and Renata, Cannon Hole neighbors are used to watching the Susquehanna rise, but they haven't seen it like this before. The sounds of a helicopter rescuing neighbors. And the sound of the mighty Susquehanna roaring is too much for the Babcock family of Cannon Hole. Their home has flooded before, but never like this. We left this morning. We voted out when it started coming in the door. We're going to lose everything we got again. Right behind me is the Susquehanna River, which has been overflowing its banks all day, flooding homes and even shutting down roads. Now, if we pan over, you can hear a helicopter. People are trapped inside of their homes here in Barton, and they've been being rescued by helicopters all day long. And once this helicopter is done with this rescue, it's headed down to Pennsylvania, where three people are trapped on a tree along the Susquehanna River. The Babcocks were rescued by boat. While they're happy they got out alive, they're devastated because they don't think they'll be able to rebuild again. A lot of water. We spent the night here last night. We left shortly after 7 this morning. I'll probably never get into a boat again. That was probably the scariest experience I've ever had in my life. Now, Cannon Hole is not protected by a flood wall. Water levels for the Susquehanna River near Waverly broke records today, cresting at 25 feet. Reporting live in the studio, Walter Smith Randolph, WENY TV News. All right, thanks, Walter. In parts of downtown Athens, where the Susquehanna and Shemung Rivers meet, also flooded. Take a look at this video. It's Main Street in Athens Borough around 1.30 this afternoon. More than 1,000 people have been evacuated from homes and businesses. The Red Cross has set up three shelters around Athens where neighbors can get some food and stay dry. Now that shelter there at the Athens Township Volunteer Fire Hall has about 140 people staying there overnight. At this point, um, if, if there's any question in your mind that water might be coming even near your home, get out. Get out. That's the majority of what we've been doing today is rescuing people who refuse to get out. Now those shelters will be open until residents are given the all clear to head back into their homes. And it, it just picked the road right up and just moved it. 
We're getting our first look at the damage left behind by flooding in the Twin Tiers. Northern Tier neighbors are cleaning up tonight and the waters are still out of their banks. Good evening, I'm Renata Steele. I'm Scott Cook. Thanks for choosing Twin Tiers tonight. Water levels in the Susquehanna River are dropping. But they're still above flood level and the work is just beginning. We have continuing coverage tonight of historic flooding. We start with the aftermath in Tawanda. WEMY TV's Walter Smith Randolph joins us live in the studio with more. Walter. Sky Renata, the Susquehanna River near Tawanda reached 30 feet. That's the second highest level ever, just three feet lower than the levels during Hurricane Agnes. The water ripped up roads and left downtown Tawanda a muddy mess. Northern Tier neighbors are still without power tonight as the Susquehanna River recedes. They're out surveying the damage, taking a first glimpse at what they have to clean up and rebuild. Ivan was up. It ran over top of the road just maybe six or seven inches, but nothing compared to what went through here within the last couple days. This is Route 6 in North Tawanda Township. The water in the creek behind me was moving so fast, it literally picked up the asphalt off of the road, turning it sideways like it was silly putty. This is a piece of the center divide. It's now where the guardrail should be. Just to see what the water can do, it's amazing the power of, of what water can, can do in a short period of time. So it's, uh, it's pretty amazing. This is the Tawanda Borough Hall where the water from the Susquehanna River got so high it came up to the front doorsteps. Now crews are on the streets trying to clean up the mud that's left behind. It's all over me and if you don't have boots, good luck getting around town. This whole place was just flooded. I mean, I, I can't believe it. I mean, it's, a lot of people can't believe it around here. Tonight, about 5,000 people in the Tawanda area still have no power, and they don't know when the lights will come back on. Reporting live in the studio, Walter Smith Randolph, WENY TV News. A, a half an hour is, is a death sentence to a lot of these people, you know. You can't, you, you can't leave these people. There are questions tonight surrounding the evacuation of an Owego nursing home. Family members say the nursing home residents went without water and electricity for two days. Good evening, I'm Renata Steele. I'm Scott Cook. Thanks for choosing Twin Tears tonight. Now, people in Owego evacuated their homes, getting ready for those floods. I guess it was Wednesday night they started evacuating. But it took one nursing home another two days to evacuate its residents and the floods had already inundated the area. And their family members are speaking up tonight saying that took too long. WEMY TV's Walter Smith Randolph joins us live in the studio with more. Walter. Sky and Renata, as the village of Owego flooded, Herb Plus wondered where his mother was. She lives at the Riverview Manor nursing home and Herb didn't hear from her or nursing home management for two days. I hate to say financial. I don't know. I mean, I believe there's a part of me. Herb Plus can't understand why his 84-year-old mother was left in the Riverview Manor nursing home while the basement was flooding. With no power, no electricity, no heat, no water, uh, and at some point or another, possibly limited food. Conditions got so bad at the Riverview, the National Guard came in and rescued the residents. The 62 seniors are now at the Cayuga Ridge Nursing Home in Ithaca. But Plus wants to know why this nursing home, almost an hour away from the Riverview, was chosen over other facilities. There's a part of me that wants to say they did it because they have financial backing with the Cayuga Ridge Medical or Nursing Home. No. That's not that's not the uh, that's not the case. There's no common ownership, no common operatorship here. So uh, I don't know where that's emanating from, but uh, uh, we were just available and uh, we were glad to do it. Herb just wants answers. I think they're more worried about the dollar than they are the resident. Now, we tried to reach out to management at Riverview, but no one's answering the phones. Herb and others are considering a class action lawsuit against the nursing home and say they've notified the State Department of Aging. Reporting live in the studio, Walter Smith Randolph, WENY TV News. Well, meanwhile, more than 900 people in Owego are still without power tonight, but neighbors are continuing the cleanup effort. Check this video out. Look at that. Field still flooded, two cars still submerged in the water. Streets of Owego lined with garbage as neighbors gut their homes and pump water out of their basements. You know, anxiety's high, people don't know what to do. People are walking away from their houses. People are just 
throwing their hands up. Some of them are sitting on the curb overwhelmed. and overwhelmed. So, you know what? The neighbors tell us there is a spirit of hope and they will get through this. Pennsylvania State Police and the Bradford County Coroner are asking for help to identify the body of a man found in a creek last Thursday. The body was found partially submerged in a small creek running along Deep Hollow Road in Monroe Township. The man is white, approximately 25 to 35 years old, just over 6 feet 2 inches tall and weighs about 200 pounds and had a mustache. The man also has multiple tattoos across his body. You see them there. Investigators asked us to show them to you in hopes of getting an ID. Anyone with information should contact state police in Tawanda at 570-265-2186. And back to our continuing coverage of the floods. People in Athens working around the clock to get things back to normal. But neighbors say a few local companies have stepped up to help make things easier. Chesapeake Energy, DuPont, and other companies like Williams Oil have donated supplies, equipment, and time to people in the northern tier. Dumpsters, water pumpers, and trucks to haul away debris have been roaming the streets looking for homes and businesses which need help. Now, these companies or the management of these companies say they wanted to help because it's their community too. Helping because this is our community too. I mean, many of our own employees were affected. Um, so, you know, it affected us just as much as uh, everybody here. The streets of Athensboro will close at 7 tomorrow morning to allow trucks to move debris off the streets. A local radio station is calling on neighbors to help flood victims in the valley. Wink 106 set up a 28-foot trailer in the parking lot at Sam's Club in Horseheads for donations. You can bring clothes, toiletries, cleaning supplies, and other items to donate this week between 7 a.m. and 8.30 p.m. The goal is to fill the trailer by Friday night for victims in the Sarah Athens area. For a complete list of items, visit WENY.com and click on useful links. And Wegman stores across the southern tier also also launched a checkout program to help flood victims. When you go through checkout, you can contribute any amount to help victims in the Twin Tiers. In Pennsylvania, 100% of donations will go toward the Red Cross Disaster Relief Fund. In New York, donations will be split between the Red Cross, Catholic Charities of Broome County, and the Chow Food Pantry in Binghamton. That's all we could do is just pray and hope that, you know, everybody gets back to sometime in normal life. It's going to be a while. Neighbors are trying to clean up and get back to normal in Owego tonight, but predators are giving them more to worry about. While residents save what they can, scammers and looters are taking advantage of a bad situation. Good evening, I'm Renata Steele. I'm Scott Cook. Thanks for choosing Twin Tiers tonight. You know, up until Saturday, Owego people couldn't even get in or out of town. The floodwaters were still high. There was no way to get to Route 17 or 17C. And tonight, neighbors tell us grocery stores still aren't even open. WENY TV's Walter Smith Randolph joins us live in the studio with more. Walter? Sky and Renata, garbage lines village streets and water is still being pumped out of basements in Owego. But through the devastation, neighbors say they're coming together to help each other out. This was a living room. This is what's left of a kitchen. And this line on the wall shows how high the water rose in Mary Liberty's living room. My basement was completely full. It was rising up the stairs and you could, it sounded just like a river running through my basement. And within half an hour, it was at the top of my first floor. Mary and her neighbors are surveying the damage today, trying to save what they can. We all on this street was, was devastated. It, it came up so quick, and, but the whole village is like that. It's, it's so sad that I don't know what they're going to do. This is Spencer Street. You can hear the sounds of generators behind me pumping water out of still flooded basements. While neighbors say this block was completely devastated, they're grateful that people are coming from near and far to help them clean up. Firefighters from Sullivan County, nearly three and a half hours away, were helping neighbors today. And we came down because we're firemen and we want to help. And it's a wonderful thing when you have when you when you can help somebody else in life. And this village ain't going nowhere. We're going to come back. And it's going to take a while, but just surviving through the emotional stress right now is, is the worst part. To find out where you can donate supplies, visit WENY.com and click on this story. Reporting live in the studio, Walter Smith Randolph, WENY TV News. 
Thank you, Walter. And not all neighbors in Tioga County are helping out with cleanup. Some are taking advantage of flood victims by looting and conducting fake home inspections. The Tioga County Sheriff's Office is warning county residents, saying some people are going door to door impersonating FEMA officials. The scam artists conduct fraudulent inspections, then condemn the home, saying it needs to be scrapped. The thieves then try to set up contracts to remove the scrap. The sheriff's office says if someone shows up at your door, ask for identification. You have to be uh, ever vigilant as far as who you're talking to. Uh, don't take people at their at face value. If somebody comes up and says, I'm so-and-so from whatever organization, please ask for their ID. If, if The sheriff's office has increased patrols in Owego and the town of Kander. That gives us hope. Um, with no other way to describe it. FEMA comes to Shimon County to assess flood damage for the first time. The mere presence is giving neighbors a renewed sense of hope. Good evening, I'm Renata Steele. I'm Scott Kirk, thanks for choosing Twin Tears tonight. Now, as of right now, Shimon County is still not on FEMA's disaster list, even though flooding hit the town of Shimon and the village of Wellsburg very hard. Today, FEMA came to Wellsburg to assess the damage to determine if the area should be declared a disaster zone. WENY Joe Melillo was in Wellsburg and ended up helping one family clean out their home. Joe. These people are working so hard, Renata. I was only there for a couple of hours. I'm sore, I'm tired, and I'm starting to understand how extensive the damage is. It's water damage. It's completely uh, water damage. I think this is probably since the 72 flood. John Allen is finding problems everywhere. From leftover damage from the flood of 1972, to mold growing in his basement, to bad drywall that needs to be torn down. It was so bad, I offered to help. Drywall gets everywhere, uh, even in my eyes. When a house floods, the insulation in the walls acts like a sponge, soaking water up to the ceiling. That needs to go. Problems like that keep popping up. So John has been here every day for the past eight days. I usually get here sometime um, between eight and nine o'clock. And I've been staying till about seven or eight o'clock every night. Um, just so many things to do. Knowing that FEMA is here made another tough day a little more bearable for John. We're looking for the how high the water level gets in the property, if the electrical system damage, if the, the what, if it's repairable or not, uh, some are, some aren't. Now today was just the initial assessment from FEMA. Inspectors still have to determine if the damage is bad enough for federal relief money. Live in the studio, Joe Malillo, WENY TV News. All right, thank you, Joe. Well, FEMA very busy, obviously, when a disaster like this hits. Right now, also gearing up to help out local farmers who were hit hard by last week's flooding. Just this morning, the U.S. Senate passed a $6.9 billion disaster funding bill. $266 million of that money will go to help farmers clean up. WENY TV's Walter Smith Randolph spent some time surveying the damage with local farmers today and joins us live in the studio with more. Walter. Scott and Renata, farmers tell me that money will only make a dent in the cleanup. The damage is so widespread, they're not sure how or when they'll recover. Right now we would be normally chopping corn to fill the bunks for, you know, feed for the cows. Instead, Craig Strong is... Cleaning up flood trash. Yep. Strong's Tioga Center Farms bore the brunt of last week's flooding. His corn is muddy on the outside and wet on the inside. No good to sell. The corn in this field is typically twice this tall and the color is usually a deep green, like these trees. The biggest shock was that it just didn't quit raining there on Wednesday and Thursday morning when the water was so high and, you know, it was, we knew it wasn't going to be good. There's actually more corn standing than what I thought would be standing. It may look like a brighter picture at Frisbee Farms. But Kevin Frisbee, who represents Tioga County Farmers, well, says it's here, bad all over. We're in an area we're not used to before. And generally they call it 100 year floods. We've had 200 year floods in five years. So the 100 year flood adage is kind of not working. 
In addition to the federal money, Governor Cuomo has allocated 15 million state dollars to an agriculture and community recovery fund to restore damaged farmlands. Log on to WNY.com and click on this story for more information. Reporting live in the studio, Walter Smith Randolph, WNY TV News. All the destruction that, that the flooding leaves was there, two feet high, so um, many, many things were, were lost. The sea of water flooded the Owego Elementary School and students now have to travel to Broome County, adding 45 minutes onto their commute. Good evening, I'm Renata Steele. I'm Scott Cook, thanks for choosing Twin Tiers tonight. Now kids at Owego Elementary have already missed over a week of class while administrators are scrambling to find space. Those kids are now attending a former middle school in the Union Endicott School District. WEMY TV's Walter Smith Randolph spent some time to there today with students and joins us live in the studio with our continuing coverage. Walter the Linnaeus W. West School was shut down in June, Scott and Renata. The Union Endicott School District had no use for it. That's until the Owego School District needed a place to teach its elementary students. They stink. That's what fourth grader Larissa Fisher thinks about floods. Not only is her home flooded, so is her school. Water is still being pumped out of Owego Elementary today. Even the playground can't be touched. The flooding left school officials searching for space. This has been my office for the last 11 days. And um, just the other day, we got a telephone and um, I actually have a laptop computer now to work with. We, we've rebuilt a school from the ground up and uh, it, it's been the help of a lot of people. The Union Endicott School District is letting the Owego District use the former Linnaeus W. West School. We've been very fortunate. We were also really fortunate that this building has only been vacant since June and it was clean and it was, you know, ready for us. Books were donated from as far as Syracuse and classroom furniture was donated from as near as the Elmira City School District. While it's not what these kids once knew, for now, it's good enough. It's time to go to lunch. Principal McCavney says cleanup in the old building has a long way to go. They probably won't be back at Owego Elementary until next September. Reporting live in the studio, Walter Smith Randolph, WNY TV News. You get some people that they've lost everything and they just don't even know where to turn. And uh, you start with a cup of coffee. Tioga County flood victims now have a place to go for more than a cup of coffee and a warm meal. 14 state and federal agencies are set up and ready to help anyone affected by the flood. Good evening, I'm Renata Steele. I'm Scott Cook. Thanks for choosing Twin Tiers tonight. A FEMA relief center opened in Tioga County today to a steady flow of people coming in for help. Representatives from FEMA and state departments from the Office of Children and Family Services to the DMV are ready to help people navigate through federal and state services. WEMY TV's Joe Malillo has information on how to get help. Joe, what can people do? Renata, the Disaster Relief Center at Nichols Elementary School has everything flood victims need. The Red Cross, the Community Care Network of Nichols, and Tioga County Neighbors Helping Neighbors are available at the elementary school every day from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. except for Sundays. Hot meals any time of the day and supply kits are available for immediate help. FEMA is also in the building to help with long-term needs. Even if they haven't had a tremendous loss, it's, it's a struggle to deal with the emotions of all of this. And so it's a chance for them to sit down and talk to others that are going through the same thing. We need them to register and want them to know that we're here and get the word out. That we're here and we're open and we're here to help in any way that we can. And if we don't have it, we'll help in any way to try to get it for them. In Tioga County, more than 2,000 people are registered for FEMA aid and over $5 million of relief money has been approved. Live in the studio, Joe Malillo, WENY TV News. Thanks, Joe. And flood victims in New York could get a tax break. Assemblyman Jim Tedisco and Senator Hugh Farley are introducing legislation to give tax credits to flood victims to refund state sales tax spent on disaster-related expenses. Now, victims need to keep their receipts to file with their taxes. The bill may not become law in time to include on 2011 tax forms, so people may have to wait until they file for 2012. And joining flood relief efforts is as simple as 211. United Way of the Southern Tier and the Institute for Human Services in Bath are reminding people to use the 211 helpline to donate things or time or services. Just go to 211helpline.org and click on the Give Help button. 
Now you can register as a volunteer and search for recovery projects. The 211 helpline is also available on the phone 24 hours a day for people who need help. Just got to dial 211 or if you'd like the toll free, go 800 346 2211. And as you can imagine, hundreds of animals are displaced whenever flooding hits an area. That happened to one piglet here in the southern tier, but now she's made her way to Farm Sanctuary. WEMY TV's Walter Smith Randolph spent some time in the pig pen today and joins us live in the studio with more. Walter. Scott and Renata, Farm Sanctuary rescues dozens of animals from flooding, but the caregivers in Watkins Glen say there's something different about this little piggy. It's hog heaven at Farm Sanctuary, and the pig pen has a new addition. Meet Jane. Yep, she eats just like a pig, and she's allowed to. It's all a part of her recovery after she almost drowned during flooding that hit Shimon County. She had such a strong will to live. I mean, she was being pushed down a flooded creek. There were boulders being pushed out of yards by this flood water, and yet this teeny tiny 10 pound piglet found the strength to crawl up on the bank. A Wellsburg neighbor saw the piglet and rescued it. Jane was completely purple and shivering, so Betty massaged her and warmed her up. But, you know, she knew that a pig was going to be better off here at Farm Sanctuaries. The caregivers here at Farm Sanctuary are keeping a close eye on Jane, making sure she wasn't harmed by the flooding. And once she gets a little bit bigger, she'll meet her companion, Sebastian. Sebastian was rescued from the 2008 flooding in Iowa. Here she'll be able to live out her life in peace. Uh, she won't ever be used in any way. So she'll be able to just kind of enjoy herself and be an ambassador for other piglets. The caregivers at Farm Sanctuary say it's important to move your animals to higher ground when there's a chance of flooding. If you must leave them behind, make sure you keep the barn door open. It'll increase their chances of survival. Reporting live in the studio, Walter Smith Randolph, WNY TV News. I mean, these guys took them in, but they don't care for them like we would. Animal shelters throughout the Twin Tiers are bursting at the seams. They've taken in lots of pets displaced by flooding and now those pets have no place to go. Good evening, I'm Renata Steele. I'm Scott Cook, thanks for choosing Twin Tiers tonight. Hundreds, at least hundreds, if not thousands of people throughout the Twin Tiers still without homes tonight, and so are a lot of their pets. Some local animal shelters say they can't accept any more pets because they simply don't have the space. WEMY TV's Walter Smith Randolph joins us live in the studio with our continuing coverage, Walter. Sky Renata, Strayhaven and Waverly is used to taking in pets off the streets, but after the flooding, it's getting difficult for the animal shelter to feed and give attention to the cats and dogs. That's a cry for help. Nino needs some attention and a new home. There's no doubt the Johnsons love their Siberian Husky, but after their home flooded, they had to bring Nino to Strayhaven. I heard. You can't come see him all the time. You can't find no place because nobody accepts animals. And it's hard. The Johnsons are living in an RV and don't know when they'll find a new place. We're um, overcrowded, understaffed. Um, it's a lot more work for the staff to, to take care of the animals and um, clean and feed them every day. Because of the flooding, lots of animals are being abandoned. These little guys are about seven weeks old and they were found at the end of a driveway. Um, people you know, either lost their animals and don't know where to look for them or um, aren't able to take care of them anymore. So they just dump them off at the first place they can find. And what should they do instead? Call us. Um, or call um, an any SPCA. Now Strayhaven is working with other shelters to find space. The shelter goes through 100 pounds of dog food a day and could use some donations. Log on to WNY.com and click on this story to find out how you can help. Reporting live in the studio, Walter Smith Randolph, WNY TV News. Yeah, and I bet those puppies are gone in five minutes. Thank you very much, Walter. Well, House Democrats blocked the stopgap budget bill yesterday with $3.7 billion for disaster relief. Now, they wanted the measure to include cuts of the same amount somewhere else in the bill. Congressman Maurice Hinchy says he and other Democrats would support the seven-week bill if it contained the $6.9 billion in disaster relief the Senate approved last week without any budget offsets. Now, for their part, lots of GOP conservatives felt the bill allows spending at too high a rate. 
there's just too much junk laying around and we still have more to haul out. As you can see by the piles, where are we going to put it? The cleanup continues in Sayre, but help from the borough has stopped. Some neighbors say they don't understand why when there's so much left to do. Good evening, I'm Renata Steele. I'm Scott Kirk. Thanks for choosing Twin Tears tonight. For the past three weeks, neighbors in Sayre have been cleaning up the mess left by the Susquehanna River flood. They've been throwing their trash into these dumpsters, which were provided by the borough. After today, neighbors won't be able to get rid of their junk on the borough's dime. WEMY TV's Walter Smith Randolph spoke with neighbors today and joins us now live in the studio with our continuing coverage. Walter. Renata, neighbors on Sayers East Side are ticked off. They've got a long way to go before they can get back to any type of normalcy, and they don't understand why the borough has stopped helping. One by one, the floorboards at Lori Hall's home are coming up. They're junk, destroyed by floodwaters. We've ripped the walls, floors, insulation. We lost everything as far as appliances, furniture, everything. All of that garbage is piling up outside of her Lockhart Street home. For the past three weeks, the borough hauled the junk away. But once these dumpsters are gone, that's it. I, I don't understand it. Don't understand it at all. I mean, what are we? We're supposed to be a community over here and working together, and we can't even get the help we need. Borough officials say they have helped, and three weeks is enough time to clean up. We made sure that we had enough dumpsters on the ground for the last push for the weekend. Um, as of this morning, there were two brand new dumpsters brought in, so I mean, we're not abandoning anybody. Don't tell that to Lori and her family. That I think they need to get out here and get us some more help with the cleanup. The borough manager says if you need help, give Borough Hall a call and they'll see what they can do. That information is on our website at WENY.com. Reporting live in the studio, Walter Smith Randolph, WENY TV News. All right, thank you, Walter. New York farmers are working to help their peers hurt by the flooding. Corn and Cooperative Extension, the New York Farm Bureau, and the State Department of Agriculture have established the CCE Forage Exchange. Now, this is a website where farmers who have available feed can post it online for flooded farmers to use. The Forage Exchange can be found on the Cornell Cooperative Extension website, and we've got a link at WEMY.com under Useful Link. We have regulations that are, at the moment, seem to be impeding us from being able to react to it, and uh, that's going to require some changes. Pennsylvania Governor Tom Corbett says river regulations need to be changed to prevent future flooding from the Susquehanna. The governor toured flood destroyed downtown Athens today. Good evening, I'm Renata Steele. I'm Scott Cook. Thanks for choosing Twin Tiers tonight. It's been more than a month since flooding destroyed downtown Athens. And today, Governor Corbett got a first-hand look at the damage left behind. The governor toured Main Street and saw the damage Athens neighbors are still dealing with. WEMY TV's Walter Smith Randolph joins us live in the studio with more. Walter. Scott and Renata, attorney Susan Hartley is trying to stay afloat on Main Street in downtown Athens. She ran into Governor Corbett today and says it's reassuring to know he's getting a first-hand look at the damage. Susan Hartley is doing the best she can to keep her law office going. She's literally hanging her clients' wills out to dry. Fans and dehumidifiers in a makeshift drying room are helping her piece her law office back together. Nothing was evacuated. Basically, the first floor is a pretty much complete gut job. Pennsylvania Governor Tom Corbett visited her office today as part of his tour of flood damage Athens. On Main Street, Governor Corbett said river regulations have to change to help clean the river and prevent future flooding. We needed to do some investigation of what we can do with our uh, regulations that seem to impede helping to clear out the streams. Uh, if we can do that, because a lot of times, you know, if we could clear out some of the streams, we might be able to have the water flow down. Susan hopes the governor can work with other agencies to change those regulations. Well, my reaction is that it would be very um, important for the government to figure out a way to control the Susquehanna River, and I understand it's not just the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. I think the people uh, of Athens will uh, will come back. I, mean, I know they have great leadership here. Uh, this, is, this is their homes. Governor Corbett says plans are already in the works to see what can be done, but cautions it'll take a lot of time and money before any regulations are changed. Reporting live in the studio, Walter Smith Randolph, WENY TV News.
anything is a help. And it, when you hear that there could be help coming, it really makes you feel better. Governor Cuomo set aside more than $20 million to help flood damaged businesses in New York. Small business owners in Owego say it's about time. Good evening, I'm Renata Steele. I'm Scott Cook. Thanks for choosing Twin Tiers tonight. It's been months since flooding from Tropical Storm Lee devastated Owego. Most businesses have reopened, but it's been a long, tough road. Now small business owners are getting some help from the state. WENY TV's Walter Smith Randolph joins us live in the studio with the latest on the flood recovery grant program. Walter. Renata, it's part of Governor Cuomo's latest attempt to create jobs and grow the economy. Business owners I spoke with say every little bit helps. Three months ago, flooding shut down the Goat Boy gift shop in Owego. It's back open, but it took a lot of work and money. We, you know, exhausted all personal funds that we had. So just what you have to do, because not opening was not an option. That's because Lisa Carrado's shop is her only source of income. Now she's getting help from New York State. Governor Cuomo set aside $21 million in grant money to help businesses affected by the floods. We, we think it's a long time in coming. Uh, the, the flood is, is now uh, three months old. Every little bit helps. I mean, every bit that, you know, that New York State can give to these businesses will help them. It'll be the difference between them closing and not closing, perhaps. It's the same story at John's Fine Foods. <laughs> Do you want paper or plastic? So we had around three, three and a half feet of water here in the store. It took John five weeks to get his grocery store back open and the items back on the shelves. He even had to take out a loan. And there's still a lot of work to be done. We had to buy new registers, new computers, furnaces. Uh, air conditioning units, compressors. But this grant money is a sign of hope for business owners like Lisa and John. A little bit of money would, would help a lot. Now each small business can apply for up to $20,000. No word yet on when that money will be distributed. Reporting live in the studio, Walter Smith Randolph, WNY TV News. Thank you, Walter. Flood recovery is on the agenda at a public meeting in Athens next week. The borough's long-term community recovery program is inviting people who live, work, or visit Athens to the meeting. They're looking for ideas to rebuild and make Athens a stronger, safer, more sustainable community. The workshop is scheduled for 6.30 Monday night, that's December 12th, in the Athens High School cafeteria. The floods were a terrible, probably the single worst situation that I dealt with as governor. Governor Andrew Cuomo comes to the southern tier to sign a $50 million flood recovery grant program bill today. The money will go to small businesses and farms to help them recover from September's historic floods. Good evening, I'm Renata Steele. I'm Scott Cook. Thanks for choosing Twin Tiers. Today. On Wednesday, we first told you about a new flood recovery grant program that's designed to help small businesses and farms get back on their feet. Well, today, Governor Cuomo signed that bill right here in the Southern Tier. It's $50 million of state aid. $21 million will go to small businesses and farms across the state. WENY TV's Walter Smith Randolph was there when Cuomo signed the bill. He joins us live in the studio with more. Walter? Scott Renata, the farmers I spoke with today say they're still recovering and they're glad the state is offering more help. The Engelbarts are still trying to rebuild their Tioga County farm. It was devastated by flooding from Tropical Storm Lee. We lost a lot. We had soil and water come in and do an assessment the week after the flood and they figured over $1.2 million. Lisa's family is glad to hear Governor Cuomo is trying to help them recover. <laughs> All right. $21 million of the $50 million grant program will help small businesses and farms. Each farm can apply for up to $20,000 in aid. We want to make sure that people have the financial support that they need, and the state is doing everything that it can do to provide that financial support. While the $20,000 grant doesn't come close to what the Engelberts lost, they say they'll take all the help they can get. We're not the kind of people that like government help. We like to do things on our own. It's a little different situation. 
head on over to WNY.com. We have a link in this story with more information on the program. Reporting live in the studio, Walter Smith Randolph, WNY TV News. Renata.